With love letters, I offer unadulterated, heartfelt gratitude to the writers, actors, comedians, and artists of all variety who have made this world richer through the light of their brilliance. Love Letters is a way for me to say thank you to these luminaries, to honor what is best in us all, and to shine a light on the people who help us rise. I offer you love letters for all these reasons, but also for the simple reason that this world is too free with critique and too stingy with compliment. And now, my 15th love letter, a letter for Sarah Waters. Dear Sarah Waters, all that follows is for the little stranger. Thank you for hundreds hall as a living thing and dying, for echoes of Usher's house falling, and for the clock set always at 20 to nine. Thank you for prying a plaster acorn off a decorative border and slipping it into a pocket as an act of ownership. And for the boy who did it, grown to become a man, but always a maid's son who longs to be master of the house and so is not to be trusted. Thank you for steady decline and tarnished brass, gardens untended, the house disintegrating bit by bit cracked stone steps and ivy dying in patches, a house precarious, a place of not knowing what waits in the dark around corners. Thank you for the octagonal room and its yellow wallpaper peeling like slopped skin, for a wedding dress unworn and the ring thrown in anger, for white sheets covering furniture like shrouds and for a leg mangled in war, a limp like something falling behind. Thank you for people locked up, locked out, locked in, gone mad, for eras gone and for decay, for former glory and current ruin made more desolate by the gilded memories not so far in the past. Thank you for a low voice reading lines about feasting tables and daisies and daffodils, for dim passageways and ripped silk and the house in slow, creeping collapse, threadbare and sagging, a crumbling beast. Thank you for Jip, the dog put down for a bite not his fault, the senseless death of the loyal and the innocent. I'll level with you, lady. I wept bitter tears on that page and let the book slip from my hands and did not pick it up again for days. Thank you for rings on fingers like decorating to climb, for a serpent-headed banister climbing in an unbroken line, and for family portraits on a wall, a long line of ancestry in which no more pictures will be hung. Thank you for blackberries and shabbiness and the impossible task of writing what is sinking and for the phrase turning to ash between my fingers. Thank you for chandeliers unlit and cold seeping, for isolation and dying under the weight and for desperation, its own brand of malevolent specter. Thank you for a cruel force that causes obstruction and puts footstools in wrong places and for the writing on the wall. Thank you for scorch marks on the walls and on the ceiling, under the wood, something smoldering beneath surfaces. Thank you for the shaving glass creeping across the washing stand and launching itself at his face. Thank you for the wrongness of ordinary objects gone wrong become animated and for the watching of objects with fevered vigilance that did no good in the end. Thank you for the house greedy, a thing of taking, for a dark spirit like a sly, spiteful child, and for the fire and his room like a small scene from hell. Thank you for strange sounds in the house, a soft sound like tapping that stops when you seek it and starts again in another room like a little hand rapping. 
Thank you for a fluttering sound in a dressing room, like a bird caught in a chimney, like old grief come calling. Thank you for loneliness and loss and all of us like houses coming apart by years by the pull of what we've hidden or refused to admit is there. Thank you for sounds from the speaking tube, whispers and whistles and the haunted beckoning of the past for a broken window and blood and a mother trapped behind the door in an empty nursery with grief for her dead daughter as company. Thank you for phantasms, unconscious parts of people so troubled they take on a life of their own. Thank you for spirals like the chambers of a seashell, for menace creeping across the snow, for a key in the snow, and for things changed, gone wrong, so badly and so quickly. Thank you for the supernatural and the culmination of the ancestral, for everything wasted and everything gone. With immense gratitude for this book of broken things, for our faces reflected in cracked window panes, a little stranger with distortion, but still our own. Thank you, Sarah Waters. All my best, Sarah D. Little. Up next, Margaret Atwood. <laughs>